Hi everyone, I'm Miss Katie from Rockland Public Library and today we're going to be reading Clovis Keeps His Cool. Clovis Keeps His Cool is another book off of the Chickadee nominee list this year. So 10 books are chosen each year and then it's a Kids' Choice Awards. So kids around the main can choose their very favorite of the 10 and I thought we could read them together and then you could vote below. So let me know which one is your favorite. This is our third on the list. And it is a play off of the phrase, a bull in a china shop. Has anyone ever heard that phrase before? A bull in a china shop. Sometimes when you're running around like crazy, an adult might say, you're acting like a bull in a china shop. It means someone who's maybe being a little clumsy or not thinking things through and rushing headlong into things. It's about being a big tough thing surrounded by some breakable things. And this shop is a china shop. Does anyone know what a china shop is? It is a store that has breakable plates and bowls and cups. China is your fancy porcelain items. So you might have some fancy stuff at home like this, or maybe your grandparents do, a fancy set of teacups or fancy plates that might be only brought out for special occasions. So this is the story of Clovis Keeps His Cool, a bull in a china shop. Now this story is written by Caitlin Arison and illustrated by Eve Farp. Let's see what happens in Clovis Keeps His Cool. Clovis ran his granny's old china shop in the town square. On inventory day, he unpacked and stacked porcelain so fine you could almost see through it. Never did he drop one dish. Grace, Grace, nothing broken to replace, he whispered, as granny used to say. Oh, look at his granny. There was just one problem. Clovis had a temper as big as he was. As a linebacker for the Cloverdale Chargers, he lost his temper on and off the field. Can you see what's making him lose his temper here? There's an apple with a worm in it. Oh no, oh no. I don't think I would like that much either. But since taking over Granny's shop, he felt uh, calmer until the day a few old rival players dropped by. Uh-oh, there they are peeking in his store. Not them, Clovis thought, and he clenched his teeth. Can you clench your teeth? Oh, not them. Well, looky here, said one, the bull in the china shop. Is that Colossal Clovis? said another. I can hardly recognize him in that apron. Huh, huh, huh. Yeah, he quit football to play tea party, said the third. Clovis clenched his teeth. Oh, the anger rose, the old urge to charge, but he resisted. He breathed in to the count of ten. Do you think we can count to ten together? One, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And then he breathed out. I will not lose my cool, Clovis said. Tired of waiting for a response, the hecklers moved on. On dusting day, Clovis put on soothing music. He spent a while in lotus position and then set to work. Grace, grace, nothing broken to replace, he sang, and soon the glassware gleamed until voices rose over the violins. Uh-oh. Not again, Clovis thought. You missed a spot, said one. Better watch that big behind, said another. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah, one false move and crash, said the third. Clovis clenched his teeth. Oh, there it was again, the urge to charge. But he resisted. He quickly grabbed a fluffy cushion to squeeze. Mm, 
Oops, wait, that was a cat. He gently stroked the cat. I will not lose my cool, said Clovis. Bored, the hecklers gave up again and headed home. On display day, Clovis lit a lavender candle. He sipped on chamomile tea, then set to work. Grace, grace, nothing broken to replace, he chanted, installing the window decor until noses nuzzled the glass. Oh, no. This time, they barged into the shop. Fancy a spot of tea, fellas, said one. Oh, isn't that precious? A portrait of his granny, said another. Wow, said the third. I didn't know she had a beard. Clovis was a kettle about to boil over. How dare they insult his granny? They picked up Granny's favorite teacup and taunted him. Hey, Clovis, can you catch a pass? No, cried Clovis, don't. But it was too late. Smash! Granny's cup lay in bits at his hooves. Clovis was all out of grace. He chose the ch chase and he charged. Get through town, hot on the heckler's hooves. The stampede didn't stop until he chased them to the end of the dark alley. The hecklers huddled together, trembling. This was the Clovis they remembered, the one capable of crushing anything and anyone. Clovis snorted and pawed the ground. He lowered his horns to strike. And one tiny tea bag dropped into his view. Oh, look, it's caught on his horn. Clovis stopped. Granny, he thought. Oh, Granny Grace, everything's broken. Your teacup, your shop. From somewhere deep in Clovis' memory, Granny's voice answered, My dear, Grace, Grace, what is broken can be replaced. Clovis let her gentle words wash over him. He looked straight at his enemies and he sighed. Look, I may be a bull, but I am not a bully. Can I interest you guys in a cup of tea? The hecklers looked at each other in disbelief, but Clovis seemed serious, so serious, that when he turned to lead the way, they followed him. Look, here they go. Hmm. Back at the shop, the window and its wares lay smashed to smithereens. Clovis set a table anyway. Carefully, he poured four cups of tea, and together they sat in silence, sipping. For a moment, it was as if they were all the, on the same team, and it made the hecklers think. The next day, they came back. Oh no, thought Clovis. But this time was different. They came back the next day and the next. Do you see what they're doing? Collecting, sweeping. Little by little, they helped Clovis pick up the pieces, putting right what had gone wrong. And always Clovis served tea. By the time his shop reopened, a few things had changed. Clovis had new hobbies. And he had new friends. Oh, look, he's teaching them how to think clearly too and relax, do some meditation, and plenty of grace to go around. The end. Great listening, everyone. That was Clovis Keeps His Cool. And in Clovis Keeps His Cool, he does a couple things to relax. He has some nice smelling candles around. He meditates, he does some deep breathing, lots of things to get him to relax and not let those bullies get to him. I hope you enjoyed this story and I can't wait to read you all soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>